Hi everyone, Stepan here. I'm going to show you my round 7 game from the Barcelona Suns Open. Uh, I apologize in advance if uh, you hear a noise. There will be probably construction going on at my neighbor's place. Okay, so I faced a lower rated opponent again and again I don't want to go into too much detail but the tournament wasn't going well and I wasn't feeling well uh, playing playing the game I honestly I did not want to play but I decided to play anyway okay my opponent started e4 which I'd expected and I saw one of his games where he played the Panov by transposition from the Scandinavian and that's what I'd expected basically uh, and that's what happened so d4 d5 we exchanged and he played c4 knight of six knight c3 knight c6 okay now the main move here is knight of three and against this i had something prepared uh, i wasn't going to go bishop g4 because i wanted to avoid the end game but he played bishop g5 and i played bishop e6 which is the main move and now there are a couple of moves uh which are the main moves uh he continued a3 which is by far the most popular move and here black can do two different things queen d7 or g6 i went for g6 the idea is bishop g7 pressure on the d4 pawn after c5 is played okay he continued with the main line bishop takes e takes and now c5 is the main move and c5 leads to the main line positions but he took on d5 and i know this move of course but i haven't looked at it in a long time uh, so i actually had some remembering to do okay so bishop takes is forced and after queen e2 knight d7 is forced uh if you don't play knight sorry knight e7 uh, if you play bishop e7 then there's queen b5 and you lose after bishop e6 d5 and that's game over and on queen e2 if you go bishop e6 again there's d5 and you're just down a piece so i played knight e7 uh, and i made a mistake I, I want to talk about it here because it's i think thematic and most people do it at some point uh, you're trying to remember something deeper down the line but you do it at a point where you know what the move is so i, I knew that knight e7 is the only move that doesn't blunder a piece but i still spent uh i want to say two or three minutes figuring out how to react to queen b5 check and that's a mistake you should do it when when it actually happens anyway i played knight e7 he took on d5, queen takes d5, and queen b5 check. And this is the point I couldn't remember. I knew that there were a couple of moves. I knew that king d8 was a move. I also knew that queen d7 was a move. And to be honest, I didn't know what happens on queen takes b5. So th the main issue is, how do you defend the pawn on f7? That's going to be the theme of this variation and you don't want to blunder away your pawn on f7 so I'd, I'd spend i want to say 10 to 15 minutes here trying to figure out what the best move was now again i knew that all three moves had been played before and then the playing queen d7 which turned out to be the most popular because i couldn't see any issues with my c pawn after queen d7 on queen takes b5, uh, bishop b5, king d8, bishop c4, I saw knight f5. And of course, it's, it offers a pawn trade, but after knight e2, knight d6, you come back to defend and it should be okay. There's no more bishop b5, you're gonna play bishop to g7 and f5. And this seemed okay, but I didn't like my knight on d6, I wanted my king on d6. Okay, uh, and then if you go king d8, then queen takes d5, knight takes d5, uh, bishop c4. This was a bit more complicated. I couldn't figure this one out. I saw that I can attack g2, but there was g3. So after something like knight f4, g3, uh, I have nothing here. 
Uh, this was played before and people played rook c8, b3, knight e6. Okay, but I played queen d7. <clears throat> okay, he took on d7. I took with the king and on he did not play bishop c4 but if he did play bishop c4 i was going to play knight f5 again going into those positions where i double attack on on the or where i attack the pawn on d4 uh so knight f5 knight d6 okay uh the difference is my king is already on d7 so that's a one tempo improvement to the previous lines he played bishop b5 though, and now I got what I wanted, my king on d6, pretty safe. He played king d2, uh, and I couldn't resist a tempo, so I played bishop h6 check, even though eventually he has g3 f4, uh, this just brings out a piece and controls the c1 square. So before he plays g3 f4, he isn't going to be able to play rook c1, which seemed good to me. King d3, rook a c8, uh, knight e2, knight d5. And this actually prepares to set up a threat. I want to go knight b6, and I want to win the bishop with a6. Uh, he played g3, and I played knight b6. Now, I thought that b3 was forced. Uh, I just thought b3 was the best move. Uh, of course, on, on b3, a6, there's bishop c4. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna go rook c7, defending f7, then I'm gonna go rook c8. But he surprised me with a4, which I discarded immediately uh, as a bad move. So the reason I thought this was a bad move was a6, a5, and then I move my knight away, and the bishop is still attacked. Now, of course, I don't want to take, allowing him counterplay, this seems, pretty good if I go something like king c6 then knight c3 uh, or if rook c6 then h4 and okay for the moment I have that doubled pawn but my, my b5 pawn is is going to fall inevitably uh, but after a6 a5 knight d5 and there's bishop c4, there's bishop a4. Bishop c4 seems counterintuitive. If bishop c4, then knight b4 check, the king has to go to c3, and now I can exchange uh, with bishop d2 check. And after king d2, then rook c4, and this should be a pretty dominant position for me. However, after bishop a4, I couldn't see what to do. Uh, let's say knight b4 check again. Let's say king e4, f5, king f3. This is as far as I, I, I got, and, and bishop to g7. And I just thought that this wasn't enough. I couldn't see what to do after something like rook d1, knight c3, maybe d5 in the future, maybe bishop b3. I wasn't sure about this position. So I decided to risk it, and I decided to play a move that turned out to be a bad idea but he didn't punish it i played a5 instead of a6 the idea behind a5 is to give me permanent control of the c2 square uh, even though i'm giving away the b5 square i thought this isn't such a big deal okay for as long as my pieces are controlling everything however there is a move to punish this, and of course I looked at it during the game, but I couldn't figure out why this would work for white. When your opponent has a pawn on a5, usually b4 is a good move. When your opponent has a pawn on h5, usually g4 is a good move. And that's the way you break to do, through the structure, especially since the pawn cannot be defended. So whenever you advance a pawn to a5, you have to look at b4. Okay, so b4. And my reasoning was this okay i'm gonna take it he's going to put pressure on the pawn with either the a rook or the h rook and now knight d5 and i couldn't see what he does after bishop c4 bishop f8 and i thought okay i just keep my pawn however white is much better and this is as far as i got and i thought okay th this is great if he plays b4 i'm just a pawn up but after bishop d5 king d5 knight f4 check I have to go to c6, then he checks me on c1, and I have to go to d7. 
and his pieces are extremely dominant. He has knight d5 here, threatening f6, threatening... Sorry. Threatening uh, knight b6. And white isn't winning, but white is much better. Okay, instead he played f4. <clears throat> and I went for, for the c2 square. I played knight d5. Rook a c1, f5. Uh, I want to prevent g4 if I can, so that I can move my bishop away. Not now, but in the future. Uh, and I also wanted to give my bishop the option to go to g7, even though I would much rather have it on f8, but I don't have time to, uh, to exchange rooks. I don't want to give up the c file. So, he played h4, which I, I don't think is a good idea. Uh, turned out to be later, but it's weakening g3, and this is the move that actually gave me great winning chances. Okay, bishop g7. I was waiting for him to do something. I, I'm improving my pieces. I don't see a way for him to improve his. Uh, knight c3... I, I don't really know what to say about knight c3. I don't think it's a good move. So he exchanged rooks, and after rook c8, rook c8, he actually played rook c1. And this position, I was sure black was winning. Here is why. Uh, this is what happened in the game. Knight b4 check. Now, king d2 is pretty much forced. Uh, if you play king e3, then rook c1, knight c1, knight c2, pick up the pawn on d4. Thank you very much. So king d2. And now again, after rook c1, he has to take with the king. If he takes with the knight, there's bishop d4. So king c1. And his king is so much worse than mine that I thought this had to be enough to win. It is. The position should be winning for black with precise play. The problem is, there's bishop e8 and targeting all of my pawns. So... Uh, king d5, bishop e8, and now you have to calculate. Now, bishop f7 comes with check. So you have to be precise. Uh, I was struggling to figure out what to do, and I couldn't decide between bishop takes d4 and king e4. I ended up playing bishop takes d4, which equalizes the game, and white is perfectly fine. Uh, there is no way for black to make progress. That was a mistake. The correct way to play was to give up a pawn and activate the king. The only reason I decided against it in the end was the fact that this pawn is running away and the d5 square is defended by the bishop after bishop f7. However, I failed to appreciate that the knight is about to be double attacked. So, if king e4 then bishop f7 and king e3, attacking the knight. Now, bishop c4 should be the best move. If king d1, then there's knight d3. And after b3, I simply go bishop f8, trying to restrict his king, or I go knight f2. And I try to, for example, knight f2 check, king e1 is pretty much forced, and knight e4. And this isn't scary. That's the part I didn't see. I just go bishop f8, the pawn has been stopped, his knight is dominated. Of course, uh, there is no way for him to control the dark squares, so the knight is never going to move. If the king moves, it's going to be to either f1 or d1. Okay, so if instead of king d1, which isn't optimal, he plays the correct move, bishop c4, then knight d3 check, King c2 is forced. Uh, sorry, uh, king, uh, yeah, king c2 is forced. Uh, double attacking my knight, but now knight e1. And if he plays king d1, we can repeat once. But now after king takes e2, he has to be careful. If uh, bishop takes d3, I'm actually winning. Uh, because the bishop isn't going to be... I'm sorry, the dogs just woke up. Sorry about that. If bishop takes d3 check, uh, then king f3. And he isn't in time to put pressure on my pawn structure. So, 
he has to play h5 first. I go king f3, and now again, bishop takes f, bishop takes d3 is winning for black. <clears throat> Simply because the bishop isn't in time to go to f7 and put pressure on g6. So he has to play king d3. And now g takes h5, probably, probably, and the bishop comes in somewhere, I pick up all the pawns and should be slightly better. Okay, maybe not enough to win, but this was perfect play for, for white. So the correct way to play was actually king e4, king e3, and trying to play knight d3, and maybe read out the knight to e4 and control these two squares. Instead, I went for bishop takes d4. And now the game is perfectly equal. Bishop f7, king e4, knight d4, king d4, bishop g8, h6, I have to play h6, bishop f7, king e4, bishop g6, king f3. And this is a draw. Bishop takes f5, king takes g3, bishop e4. This is a drawn position, and I'm going to show you how. Uh, I did not play this way. That's the first thing I would like to say. If I take on f4, then these two pawns are locked. He can take on b7. I go king e3. He has no way to bring his king into play. And all I have to do is get my king to b4 and we agree to a draw. So for example, bishop c8, knight d3 check, king c2, king d4. Uh, I don't know, h5 maybe, uh, knight f4, he has to go back, king c4, he moves the bishop somewhere, king b4, that's it, no, no, no way to make progress for anybody. That's just it. Uh, he cannot really move his king away without losing the b-pawn, and he cannot really move his bishop away without losing the h-pawn. Okay, so I saw that that's going to be a draw. I wanted to try and win, since a draw is like a loss when you're playing a lower rated opponent and having a bad tournament, I decided to risk it and I couldn't figure out whether this was losing uh, or drawn or whether I had a chance to win, but I took on h4. Now this gives me an outside passed pawn which can easily be caught by the bishop, but that means that if I ever exchange the bishop, I should be winning in theory. He played king d2, which is correct. Uh, I played king g4. Okay. Uh, I should also mention that on, on bishop b7 I have knight d3 winning the f-pawn and now probably if anybody is better it should be me, but probably not enough to win. Okay, king d2, king g4, king e3, b6, saving the pawn, f5. It's at this point that I understood that, yeah, this was a bad decision. I should have just gone for a draw. Uh, I should mention also uh, that I offered the draw on king f3 uh, back on move 32, but he declined. And how do I explain this? I knew that the position is equal after king f3. I knew that much. And I was thinking, okay, I take the f-pawn and it should be a draw. Let's offer a draw and go home. I really didn't feel like playing, but he declined. And that's probably what influenced my decision to actually take on h4. Okay, of course it was a bad decision, but I'm just trying to explain my thinking. Okay, king g5, king d4, king f6, okay, king c4. And I thought I had a plan. I was gonna go knight a6, king b5, knight c5. And of course, if he takes on b6, then I win immediately. King b6, uh, knight takes bishop and I queen. So bishop c6, knight d3. Now again, if he takes on b6, then knight b2, knight a4, and eventually king takes f5, and it's going to be a draw. For example, like this. Okay, draw. So he played b3. Uh, I played knight e5. Again, if king takes b6, knight takes bishop, i queen, 
game over. Uh, he plays, I, I play h5, if he tries to catch my pawn, he cannot. If king d4, I can actually go h4. There's a trick here. If he tries to come in with his king, h3, uh, king g1, king g3, if king h1, then h2, and I just made him on, on b1. So, of course, he didn't trade the bishops. He played bishop d5. Knight d7 defends the pawn. King c6, king e7 is forced. Uh, bishop e6, good move. Uh, knight f8 again if king b6 i take the bishop and queen my pawn so bishop c4 uh, sorry not bishop e5 bishop c4 knight d7 defending the pawn and now the winning move for white is f6 and that's about it the only hope i have now is exchanging the bishops and queening my h pawn but that's not going to happen uh, king b6 king d6 king a5 king c5 uh, bishop e6 King d6, bishop h3, knight d5, bishop g2. And now I actually set up a trick to uh, trick him into a drawn endgame. I played h5, and this is, of course, easily winning for white. But there's a way to go wrong. You take the knight, king takes, and now if you play uh, b4, it should be a draw. However, he played king b6 and I resigned. Uh, of course, if I try to queen my pawn, then he queens his pawn with check. Now, of course, I saw this before uh, playing knight d5 and h5, but I was losing anyway, so I tried. Here I resigned. King b6 is, of course, correct. And yeah, I went from better uh, if I'd played king e4 to drawn after bishop takes d4 to losing after deciding to take the f pawn. Uh, so I want to say this was a very bad game, but I have a problem playing low rated opponents. And had I faced someone rated 2300, I would have taken the f pawn and wouldn't have lost the game. So I need to work on that. I need to be objective regardless of my opponent's rating. I need to pretend that rating doesn't exist during a game. That's the only way to play correct moves and make good decisions. This was conceptually a very bad game. Okay, uh, we're finally moving on to better stuff. I'm done showing you the bad games. And yeah, I still hope you got something from this. Thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for more chess. Bye-bye.